Tuesday's accident happened the day before a congressional hearing to discuss transportation funding, including plans for Amtrak. Last November, CBS Steve Croft spoke with Amtrak president and CEO Joe Boardman for a 60 minutes piece. Here is a part of their extended conversation that did not air in the original segment. How much money does Amtrak get from the federal government every year? A little over a billion dollars a year. Is that enough? No. We have a $10 billion backlog of just state of good repair for the Northeast Corridor, just maintaining it so we can continue to operate. Give me an example. Well, this is, this is one example of us being able to maintain it by continuing to fix this. But the, uh, the, the tunnels that go through Baltimore, we have to constantly fix those. And those were built right after the Civil War. So there's just... There's no money for that either. There's no money for that. If Congress wants to do something now, if, if they're coming together here and want to get something done, build this bridge. It's ready to be done. It's been ready for two years. Build it. It's tangible evidence that they can really get something done. We've talked to a lot of people who said that, that uh, the country's just sort of lost its will to make long-term capital improvements. I think that's absolutely true. I think that there is a lack of leadership and will to really tell the American people the truth. You've got to raise some money to get this thing done. What happened to your budget last year? Well, our budget is every year is like a continuing resolution. We have to wait for the appropriations every year. And they get cut or trimmed or, or, or changed so that we don't have that reliability of funding that we're looking for. Why is it so important? I mean, there are, you know, there are budget, always budget problems. Why is it so important? Because our economy and our people depend on it. Our economy in this United States needs to be globally competitive. I don't know what it takes to explain to the leadership of this nation how important it is to make sure we have reliability of transportation, whether it's highway or whether it's rail or aviation. It's not there, and it needs to be there. Earlier, Steve Croft spoke to my colleague Elaine Quijano about that conversation and the looming trouble for our roads, bridges, and rails. And Steve joins us now. Steve, thanks for being here. Take us back to that conversation. What surprised you the most about that? Uh, was Well, I was the number of things that surprised me. We were doing it as part of a story on American infrastructure called Falling, Falling Apart and the dreadful state of the bridges and highways and uh, seaports and railroads and the lack of money that's been uh, appropriated over, not appropriated over the last couple of decades, just a period of, uh, of neglect. And we were particularly interested in this one bridge called the Portal Bridge, which is the uh, between Washington and New York City, right outside uh, New York City and New Jersey. It is now the, the heaviest traffic railroad bridge in the Western Hemisphere, and it's falling apart. I remember that because if that bridge, if something, heaven forbid, were to happen to that, I remember Joe Boardman saying, you're talking about trains stacking up on either side of that, backing up all the way to Washington or, right. or to New York. It would cost a billion dollars to replace it. And um, their plans have been approved. Everything is going except Congress has not appropriated the money. And we wanted to talk to him just in, generally, uh, in general about Amtrak. And um, that was what the conversation was about. He mentioned the backlog of... Um, Ten billion dollars. He didn't hold back. Or, yeah, right. No, no. He mentioned uh, ten billion dollars backlog of projects just in the Northeast Corridor to bring the rail beds and the bridges up to standards. So just to r maintain them, just to get them to yes. current standards, there was a ten million dollar deficit. Right. Now compare that to a, a one point four billion dollar uh, aid package that uh, uh, that. Amtrak gets from the federal government. doesn't go very far if you're talking about $10 billion in backlogs. No, that doesn't seem to add up. I mean, so nothing has really changed in terms of that. And I guess the question is, so everybody seems to agree that there, there's something that needs to be done here. And we were talking a moment ago, you said, this has been traditionally a bipartisan issue. So then what's the problem? The problem is where are they going to get the money? The problem is that it's so big, that the problem is so big, it's going to require hundreds of billions of dollars, hundreds of billions of dollars, maybe trillions of dollars over a period of time to fix all of the things that are wrong. You know, you've got 70,000 bridges in the United States that are structurally deficient. Uh, and there's been no consensus on where that money is going to come from um, and uh, how to solve the problem. 
and that's been the big problem. I think everybody realizes that the, the, the situation is dire. It's just a question of what do you do to raise that kind of money, and over how long a period of time are you going to try and do it? There has not been a, a comprehensive transportation bill passed by Congress in, I think, 23 years. It's always been one little repair thing at a time, and that's what they're talking about in Congress right now, just another Band-Aid to fix to get them to next year. Um, and that's kind of the situation. I remember your report last November was so alarming, and I wonder, how is it that you became interested in this area of infrastructure? Because it's something we don't hear a lot about. Well, it was, strangely enough, it was a big issue in the 2008 campaign, presidential campaign. I spent a lot of time covering President Obama. He talked about it extensively, and during the campaign, both Republicans and Democrats said it was something that needed to be addressed, and that this was a good time to try and uh, do something about it because the interest rates were really low, and the economy was in terrible condition, and it would stimulate the economy. But when it came down to it, it never got done. The money got, never got appropriated, and uh, we're still kind of in the same situation we were back in 2008. Only the situation continues to get worse every year. Uh, do you see things improving at all? Well, I think half things have to improve. Um, I think they have to do something. I'm, I'm almost. I would be very surprised if they did anything significant. I would be very surprised if Congress did uh, came up with enough money to really to begin solving the problem. Um, and I, it's a bipartisan issue, and it's not been anymore. It's not any, any longer a bipartisan issue. Everybody is saying they want to fix it, but how do you come up with the money, uh, particularly without raising taxes? The people that you talked to in your report last November, what was their biggest fear, looking at the landscape as it exists today? I, the only people that I think are really concerned about this are the engineers. <laughs> who bear ultimate responsibility for bridge failures and train wrecks and things like that. And I understand that uh, they now believe that this accident uh, outside Philadelphia was related to speed. But there's a 50 mile an hour speed limit, limit yeah. in that area. Right. That's not a high speed railway. Right. right. That's 50 miles an hour because the track is in lousy condition. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, and that's the case all up and down the northeast corridor. So you're saying that if something is not done, these infrastructure problems will catch up to us. Right. I think they're, all, they're already starting to catch up. Um, there have been a number of uh, derailments over the last couple of years, um, and there have been a number of bridge collapses. So it's not like it's not happening. Yeah. Um, anything else, Steve, that as you look at what it is we're approaching the 2016 campaign season now. You mentioned this was a big issue uh, in 2008. Um, what are your thoughts going forward here for the people in Washington who have the power to change this? I don't think, I think a lot of it just has to do with the system. People run for office, the last thing they want to run for office um, is saying we have to raise tax taxes. We have to generate revenue to fix this major problem. It's not being sold correctly by the, by the politicians, uh, according to the people who are involved in the business, the engineers. They say it's got to be sold as an investment. This is something that is going to create jobs. It's something that we're going to have to do sooner or later. We need to do it before it becomes much, much more expensive down the road. Steve Croft of 60 Minutes, thank you so much. Thank you.